sometimes I think that when we look around the world at the most despotic Western countries, we can kind of see the direction that our left here in the United States plans on going. And so I find it productive. In fact, during the COVID saga, we kind of saw that when we looked over at places like Ireland and Australia, um, we could see where like California and New York were, were about to go, for example. And so now I'd like to, to draw your eye, I guess you might say once again, to Ireland, but this time it's their hate speech legislation. And I still notice whenever I speak to Americans out in the wild, away from the computer, I, I come across so many that are shocked when I describe the fact that hate speech legislation even exists, you know, in, in England, you know, the country that I came from, and that people are actually arrested for saying things that the government finds to be offensive. Uh, it, it sounds like I, I, they just kind of look at me with an air of, of disbelief. And I wish I could get more people to sort of understand the dynamics that take place in that regard and just how real this is to the people over in England because uh, it spreads. You know, if you don't know what you're fighting against, most especially, you'll probably end up there because you won't fight it hard enough. So for that reason alone, I like to cover this. But Ireland's new hate speech legislation kind of takes things a little bit further, you might say, such that they are attempting to criminalize merely possessing hateful material on your devices and you will face prison time for having that material. It's called the Incitement to Violence or Hatred and Hate Offenses Bill of 2022. And despite the year, it's still going through. It's not like here in America where it's like everything has to restart for the new year. No. So, Let's take a quick look. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through some of this bill with you. Not, not a ton. I'm not going to bore you, I promise. This is actually relevant. Okay, so we're going to come over here to this document where we are. And so we're looking at literally preparing or possessing material likely to incite violence or hatred um, on account of their protected characteristics. Now that's interesting. Let's just stop there for a second. Yes, I know. I'm already distracted. But <laughs> protected characteristics. I mean, we know what these are. Because we know it's the modern left that kind of controls the culture and the government to such a degree that what is protected are their groups, the, the, the sort of victimhood groups that they've created. I mean, look at the, the least protected group. Do you think they have protections in here for the, the straight white man? Hardly. It sounds absurd. And you know it's absurd. You know it's not what's covered in here. Because that's the way this is. This is specifically laws to protect certain groups of people that are being given a privileged stance above others, and we're told that that is moral. Because they say so. Let's go ahead and look again at their moralizing here as they try and arrest you for, you know, uh, speaking ill of their classes, or just having documents that speak ill of their classes. Okay, so... The person who's guilty prepares or possesses material that is likely to incite violence or hatred against a person or group of persons on account of their protected characteristics or any of those characteristics with a view to the material being communicated to the public or a section of the public, whether by himself or herself or another person, and prepares or possesses such material with the intent to incite violence or hatred against such a person. Okay. So, the thing is... First of all, how does the government determine that you intend to incite violence unless you say, I want this person to go out and attack somebody else, for example, and that's already criminal, right? Um, so that, that's rather subjective. Even more subjective is, how does a person incite hatred? Let, 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 let's, let's break this down, because hatred is an emotional state, right? Can I incite you to, to hate an individual? Well, not really. I can inform you about an individual, and then you might have an emotional reaction, but I can't control what emotional reaction you will have. Regardless of what you say to me about somebody else, I'm free to have whatever emotional reaction. And I don't think that the government is really in a position to say that that reaction is is right or wrong or judge whether or not I even hold it. 
How can the government determine what my emotional reaction is on the basis of it? And this is all on the basis of some documents that somebody might possess. But how might one try and lead somebody towards hatred using materials? Let's think about that for a second. Let's let's not talk about one of those those protected groups because, you know, that would be awful. So, let's talk about the straight white man. Because, <laughs> you know, he's, he's now vulnerable. Um, if you were to try and create hatred toward the straight white man, how would you do it? Because you might, you might want to blame him for everything. Make him into a, a scapegoat, you might say. You might blame him for every part of society that seems to be unjust to you. You might blame him for creating a society that is, or that privileges one group over another. You might tell other groups who aren't straight white men, that all the difficulties they face in their lives are due to persecution by this one group of people, for example. Right? You might tell these other groups of people that everything they've been taught in academia is actually, is actually false and is created to benefit the straight white man. This might be one way that you try and breed hatred against straight white men. But that's, that's kind of the way that we live, right? That's, that's the leftist mantra. That's exactly what they say about straight white men. But that kind of, you know, inclination toward hatred, if you want to put it like that, that's, that's okay in those terms. And of course, I've heard all those arguments. I don't hate straight, straight white men. Nobody can make me feel a certain way. They can misinform me. Then I, I, can, I can inform myself. And I can form my own opinions. I would, hope, I would hope. I don't think I need the government to step in and tell me what I should think or feel or protect me from certain opinions or even certain information that isn't true. I don't need nor trust the government to do that for me. But there's another part of this that is that is in many cases, I guess, worse. Just looking at the same page, this is actually uh, page 13 of the bill, if you had some desire to go look at it yourself, because I think you have a, a, a right to be informed and to inform yourself, as opposed to having somebody else do it for you. But anyway, there's section three here. Uh, let me move up so you can see what, we're, what I'm looking at. In any proceedings for an offence under this section, where it is proved that the accused person was in possession of material, such as, is it, such as is referred to in subsection 1, and it is reasonable to assume the material was not intended for personal use of the person, the person shall be presumed until the contrary is proved to have been in possession of the material in contravention of subsection 1. So, in other words, said in human English, the person who possesses the material has to prove that he didn't have it in order to incite violence or hatred. He has to prove his innocence. The government does not have the burden to prove guilt. In a, a complete reversal of what has been established for, for hundreds of years as what is just. It would be just for the government to have to, you know, bear the burden to prove guilt. But in this case, no, if you're spreading hate, whatever that means, then the burden is on you to prove that in fact you had some, you had some acceptable reason for the dissemination of whatever information it was that you were sharing. You can prove your intent somehow to a court. I mean, this is... This is really dark and Orwellian stuff. I think that everyone should be opposed to this. Will there be? Probably not, because it's all about protected classes, and we've already talked about those, and, and the sort of the lines that are drawn in the political sphere in that regard. But it's horrendous, and I think more people need to speak out about it. it you know, obviously in Ireland where this bill threatens them, but also elsewhere because you see some of the same patterns, this this sense of, well, this is this is a protected class and therefore it's okay, and we're, we're not fighting against speech, we're fighting against hate. You, you see these arguments 
already in, certainly in American colleges, but also in American culture. These are the arguments that are already being made to impact and prohibit uh, free expression nowadays. And so I hope that by demonstrating the slide, we can, we can fight back harder. If you enjoyed that video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also share it with your friends. I've got links in the description down below that can help you to support me in different ways. Thank you.